Okay, uh, welcome to another YIVO Fellowship Lecture. Uh, our lecturer today is Dr. Andre uh, Bolianowski. Uh, he is the recipient of the Professor Bernard Chosied Memorial Fellowship and the Natalie and Mendel Rakolin Memorial Fellowship. Uh, Dr. Bolianowski completed his doctorate in history at the Ivan Franco National uh, University of Lviv, Ukraine. Uh, he is currently senior fellow at the Ivan uh, Kripyakevich Institute of Ukrainian Studies at the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. His work specializes in Ukraine, uh, in particular its Western regions, Poland, Germany, and Russia in the first half of the 20th century. And his research interests include Holocaust studies, nationalist movements, mass violence and genocide, inter-ethnic conflict, and war crimes. While uh, Dr. Bolyanovsky was in residence at the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel Center for Advanced Holocaust Studies at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, as well as during his fellowship at Yad Vashem International Institute for Holocaust Research in Jerusalem, uh, he conducted research on his project and presented it under the title Ukrainian Jewish Relations in the Context of Shoah in Ukraine, uh, July 1941 to July 1944. Uh, as mentioned, he is the recipient of the 2022-2023 Professor Bernard Chosied Memorial Fellowship and the Natalie and Mendel Rakolin Memorial Fellowship in Eastern European Jewish Studies at the Hugo Institute for Jewish Research. Uh, his lecture today is entitled Ukrainian Jewish Relations in the Context of Antisemitism in Eastern Europe in the Interwar Period of the 20th Century. Uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Andrei uh, Bolyanovsky. Thank you. Uh, uh, hi, uh, dear uh, fellows, historians, colleagues. Uh, first of all, I must uh, thank the Yivo Institute uh, uh, for Jewish Research uh, director and staff, and especially for Adi Portnoy, for the unique uh, opportunity to, to temporary to be be a, a fellow uh, at this authoritative and respected institute. I am especially grateful uh, for the rare possibility of collecting of large quantity of archival sources on which my own interpretation of the problem being studied is based, based uh, to a great degree. Let me introduce the presentation of my research project that in fact is in a kind of declaration of my main preliminary the thesis, approaches, uh, uh, statements, and conclusions uh, that I have planned to put into my future publication on the subject. Uh, my scholarly work will be based on a broad range of sources, and especially on the YIVO uh, archival collections, on the Ukrainian, Russian, and Polish archives, and other archival uh, sources, and as well as on published memoirs and scholarly literature. I will uh, reconstruct the history of the communicative interactions of Ukrainians and Jews on the basis of archival sources from Israel, Ukraine, USA, Poland, Russia, and other countries. However, however uh, because uh, of the limitations uh, in time for my lecture, I will give cita citations of facts which I will use in my future publications with, with general comments, references on the archival sources, memoirs, as well as scholar articles and monographs. At the same time, I will try to concentrate mainly on the conceptual aspects of the topic in the general uh, conclusions. I would be thankful if anyone who disagrees with my view, view uh, of the relation between Jews and Ukrainians during the interwar period of the 20th century, or who wish to improve my conceptual statements and preliminary conclusions, will offer me arguments or material supporting other approaches, interpretations, or different views. I would be especially thankful for any written uh, constructive critical recommendation and reflections, uh, reflections about my topic. Please uh, send it to my uh, email. Also, I, I begin uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, uh, just a moment. Mm, I, I, I must put it. Uh, I will try. Uh, so it, it must be uh, here. Yes. Just a moment. Yes. Uh, so do you see, see it? Okay. Everything is fine? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay. So, main aim of uh, scholarly work, the, uh, the history of ties be be between Ukrainians and Jews between 1980 and 1939, 
uh, uh, the research uh, uh, describes the efforts of foreign state authorities to foster animosity between Ukrainians and Jews, uh, uh, elucidate scale figures and main aspects of Ukrainian Jewish relations, as well as the interpretation of transnational players in a broad global geopolitical context. Also highlights positive experience and mechanisms of interactions between Ukrainians, Ukrainian and Jewish political, public and social groups. These interactions occurred during a period of reason anti-Semitism in the policies of national states, especially among right-wing political parties of the Second Polish Republic and in Bolshevik Russia since, since uh, 1923, the Soviet Union, as uh, a state with a latent anti-Semitism. My interdisciplinary uh, uh, scholarly work is written at the intersection of history, sociology, psychology and political science. So uh, important archival sources, uh, as I say, uh, uh, understanding the problem of Ukrainian Jewish relations, uh, Ukrainian Jewish relations uh, during this period now requires qual qualified uh, documented answers from historians so that scholars must uh, look uh, to previously overlooked documents. Uh, important documents are uh, contained in centers of written memory. So, United States Archives, YIVA Archive, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, uh, Party of the National Archives and Record Administration. Second, it's Archives of Ukraine, the Central State Archive of the Highest Authorities of Ukraine, the Central State Archive of Public Organization of Ukraine, the Central His State Historical Archives of Ukraine in Kiev and Lviv, the Branch State Archive of Security Services of Ukraine, State Archives of Lviv Region, and West, as well as State Archives of other regions of Ukraine. The third is Archives of Russia. Uh, archives from Poland uh, mentioned on the slide, and the Yad Vashem Archive of Israel. Uh, so, historiography. This uh, my topic uh, has not been sufficiently developed by, by scholars. Some existing works uh, to describe Ukrainian stereotypes on Jews or, uh, and Jewish stereotypes of Ukrainians. However, most scholars have ignored Ukrainian Ukraine archives, the EU archive, and other important collections. Scholars have not carried out work on the formation of public uh, perception on uh, one community by the other and its influence uh, on the development of relations between them using sufficiently substantiated uh, archival uh, In addition, there is need to devote the special attention to the influence of different state police uh, uh, regarding the formation of public uh, options of Jews and Ukrainians in relation to each other. So, uh, uh, anti-Semitism, uh, uh, con uh, contextualization, uh, uh, Hungary. Uh, Hungary passed uh, one of the first anti-Semitic laws in modern Europe in 1920 and issued nearly uh, 300 anti-Jewish laws and decrees before 1944. It's not surprising, therefore, that shortly after Horty came to power, Hungary enacted the so-called Numerous Clauses Act, on 1920, which restricted the number of Jews who could be admitted to higher education effectively ended legal equality of Jews in Hungary. As a result of, act, uh, of the act, uh, the number of Jewish students in Harrigan, uh, in Harrigan uh, institution fell from uh, over 30 percent to under 8 percent. This dis discipline or uh, dis discriminatory measure uh, was uh, modified somewhat in 1928 due to international uh, pres pressure, but it was never revoked. The increasingly an, uh, anti Semitic international political environment and the gradual radicalization of Hungarian internal politics in the 1930s resulted in enactment of systematic series of anti Jewish laws and sources. Uh, there's archival sources from EU archives, which you, you used, I used in my publication. So, next, uh, Romania. After World War I, two regions populated mainly by Ukrainians very, and, and Jews, of course, and uh, Rom Romanians were annexed by Romania uh, as uh, agreed upon uh, in the Treaty of Versailles. North, North Bessarabia from the Russian Empire and Bukovina from the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Political leaders pursued political and language assimilation and cultural Romanization. Simultaneously, the leadership demonstrated a growing reluctance to grant civil rights to minority groups. 
Uh, despite strong pressure from Western powers, not until 1923 uh, did Jews in Romania win legal equality. After 1929, the Jewish question became increasingly prominent with a uh, recurrent economic crisis serving as background. Anti-Semitic activities were not solely the work of radical organization. From a desire to restrict Jewish capital, partly as a consequence of perceived electoral necessities, uh, both the National Liberal Party and the National Peasant Party adopted anti-Semitic slogans. Mainstream and right-wing parties like floated anti-Semitic agitation aimed at the lower middle class, among whom they uh, nurtured the idea of climbing the social ladder and blamed uh, Jewish competition for thwarting their efforts to do so. King Carol II's uh, royal dictatorship uh, substantially intensified anti-Semitism and economic polarization. And so archival sources to this question which uh, are uh, in uh, uh, your archives. So next, uh, the roots of state sponsored anti-Semitism before the collapse of Russian empire in the territory of Ukrainian lands. Uh, this period saw the formation of the image uh, of the enemy between Ukrainians and Jews. Political, uh, linguistic and cultural Russification and assimilation of non-Russian peoples was a main aim of internal policy of the Russian empire. At the same time, exploitation of workers and peasants was the main aim of its social policy. The inevitable consequence was the growth of social discontent. As conditions for revolution arose within uh, the empire, the representative Emperor Nikolai uh, II uh, developed uh, uh, several directions for the formation of the image of the internal enemy. In order to maintain power, they tried to denationalize the Ukrainians, uh, convincing them that they were little Russians, and turned them against the Jews, and meanwhile tried to assimilate the Jews, make them loyal subjects of the Russian Empire. Uh, uh, after the outbreak of the uh, February Revolution in the Russian Empire, the monarchy collapsed, the Russian Republic was proclaimed, and a temporary, uh, temporary gov government was created. And uh, it proclaimed equal rights for all the nationalities of the state. Many forbidden national movements, which were oppressed under the Tsar regime, which came uh, out from underground. Among them, Jewish Bund and Coalition, Ukrainian, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian Social Democratic uh, Workers' Party, and Ukrainian Party of Social Revolutionists, and many others. Shortly after the February Revolution, the Ukrainian Central Council, uh, Ukraine's Central was created in Kyiv. It proclaimed the national and cultural autonomy of Ukraine in federative connection with Russia uh, as its main goal. It proclaimed the equal rights for Ukrainians, uh, Jews, Poles, and other nationalities who lived in Ukraine. From the third universal of the Ukrainian Central Council, it was said, the Ukrainian people having to fought for their national will uh, uh, for many years and now having won it, uh, will firmly protect the will of national development of all nationalities uh, existing in Ukraine. Therefore, we announce uh, that uh, we recognize the national and uh, personal autonomy of the great Russian, Jewish, Polish, and other peoples of Ukraine to ensure them the rights and freedoms of self-government in the affairs of their national uh, life. Uh, uh, beginning from this moment, the Jewish and Ukrainian cooperation uh, developed. Uh, at the time when the process that uh, Volodymyr Venechenko called the tribute of the nation began in Ukraine, the Jewish minority became stronger, managed uh, to uh, with, withstand the blows of pogroms from uh, 80, uh, 81 to 1905, uh, and to preserve itself as a separate ethnic religious community. Community. And, uh, and at the same time, with Ukrainians resumed the struggle against uh, oppression of the great power of Russia. Uh, Simon, Simon Dubno, well known uh, Jewish historian, later wrote Among the horrors of the still unfinished war and the already begun anarchy, we and Ukrainians suddenly became brothers in freedom. We forgot about uh, uh, our insults, and when Ukrainian society reached for its, uh, its national ideal of autonomy and later for uh, its independence, Jewish society held out his fraternal hand. Strange, unprecedented was the sight 
of the summer and in the fall of 1917. Two people said uh, uh, to each other, they will fight for freedom and justice. Inside the territorial autonomy of Ukraine, a personal autonomy of the Jewish population was carried out. The dream of a new national Jewishness, uh, the end of quotation. And among uh, the persons who defended uh, Jewish and Ukrainian cooperation was uh, uh, most, maybe most prominent was Joseph Boris Shechtman. And uh, uh, he was was a very known person among the Ukrainians, and uh, she said in the, their memoirs uh, on the uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, Jewish consensus. So, the Ukrainian people want to live in harmony with the Jewish people, with a fra uh, fraternal, so, uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, uh, from the Jewish side, friendly relations to the revival of Ukraine were manifested uh, uniformly and openly. Ruling uh, Ukrainian uh, circles, in turn, from the outset, made uh, to meet the requirements from the beginning came a goal to meet the Jewish national de demanders. And in other, in uh, article in one of the Ukrainian newspaper, newspapers, he wrote, the Ukrainian people want to live in harmony with the Jewish people, with a fra fraternal soul and with an uh, outstretched uh, hand, jewelry goes to meet this desire, but it demands respect for its national rights. It wants to be addressed to it, to its uh, national uh, assembly, to its national secretariat, and not to individual irresponsible parties. It wants to talk to the Ukrainian people as nation uh, to nation. And then both peoples will understand each other, will come together in friendly cooperation for the good of Ukraine and its peoples. Uh, end of uh, quotation. And uh, so, uh, according uh, to uh, some Russian authors, uh, anti Jewish pogroms of 1919 in Ukraine were organized by the Ukrainian nationalists. However, a majority of the local population at that time still didn't support Ukrainian nationalism, but considered themselves as small Russians. Yurko Tutunik, a well-known Ottoman of Petlura army, so described the meeting of soldiers of Russian army from Ukraine in Simferopol at the beginning of March 1917. About 7,000 arrived. I offered, who among you Ukrainians uh, uh, raise your hand to the mountain? No more than 300 hands went up. Little Russians, raise your hands. About half of those uh, present raised their hands. Uh, Hachlip, uh, raise your hands. A good third raised their hands up. Despite all the efforts of Ukrainian People's Republic to Ukraine's nice uh, ethnic consciousness and all spheres of national life, it was impossible in the first two years of the struggle for national independence to eradicate deep-rooted Russian shamanism, so-called little Russianism, and anti-Semitism. Uh, 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 on the Ukrainian uh, Jewish relations negative impact has a hard imperial legacy of, at that time. Uh, uh, on uh, I can give some exam example. On mm -hmm. July 26, uh, 1919, a Jewish delegation of representatives of Jewish communities uh, was recited by the uh, General Anton Denikin. The delegation of the Jewish communities said about the uh, about the, the pogroms, and uh, uh, one representative said that there the Jewish population experienced all the horrors of the race of Bolsheviks, the Gorevits, Makhnovits, and it should be said frankly that the Jewish population cannot forget that Makhnovits, Grigorievits, and Bolsheviks are all the Russian people. End of quotation. So the process of uh, uh, rebirth of national consciousness very, very uh, slow, and uh, I think that question still uh, is very controversial and need further studies. Uh, what uh, about the uh, attitude of uh, ruling uh, circles of Ukrainians towards the Jews? May maybe most known was the head of the Ukrainian Central Council, Mikhail Khrushchevsky. The uh, most uh, important his quotation is, Therefore, on the Ukrainian side, everything must be done to neutralize, uh, neutralize uh, and eradicate anti-Semitism, which has suddenly awoke it in recent time, fulfilled vulgar nationalism on the one hand and exacerbated by the participation of some Jews in Bolshevik assesses on the other. End of quotation. 
uh, at the same time, uh, it's necessary to say that uh, about uh, uniqueness of uh, Jewish national autonomy in Ukrainian uh, People uh, Republic. One of the, Jew the Jewish uh, uh, activists, uh, Solomon uh, Goldenman, representative of Jewish parties in the Ukraine National Republic government, stated. Jewish national autonomy in Ukraine was not an isolated phenomenon in the Russian Revolution, but the great extent of national autonomy granted the Jewish minority in Ukraine stands alone in the entire history of the Jewish people in diaspora. I mean the uh, order about uh, national personal autonomy of uh, Jews in Ukraine. So, as my research produced too many important examples that can be described today. In the reminder of my time, I will try to highlight just a few, just a, a few of many of such examples towards 1990. So, very briefly, pogroms. Uh, while the story of anti-Semitism in the Russian Empire is a powerful key to understanding the reasons of anti-Jewish attitude among its citizens, including those who populated Ukraine, the highlighting of the time of pogroms of 1990 in Ukraine and Eastern Europe is not introduction, but essential component or even to some extent the key to understanding the history of other Ukrainian Jewish relations in the interwar period 90, uh, of the uh, 20th century. So, uh, according to calculations of uh, uh, Tomkin, uh, uh, known uh, uh, Jewish society activist, uh, in all, there were about 330 pogroms, according to archival materials of Evo archive in Ukraine. Uh, however, uh, there is no question if uh, there were uh, pogroms or, or not. Uh, the problem is uh, which was attitude of the uh, Ukrainian People's Republic that was proclaimed at the beginning of 1918. So, uh, according to the uh, very popular stereotype, uh, uh, the head of the state, uh, Simon Petlura, uh, was uh, a huge responsible for those pogroms. But uh, maybe it's uh, too, too true, but uh, it's uh, it needs to say that, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, Petlura and uh, uh, highest leadership of the UNR, so Ukrainska Narodna Respublika, issued many orders to, in order to stop pogroms. So it's uh, you can see uh, on one of them. So uh, it's uh, just, uh, for example, a Jewish press publication on the force of Simon Petlura to stop anti-Jewish pogroms. It's just uh, steals two exams without quotations. And this is one of the many appeals of the UNR government calling to stop anti-Jewish pogroms and condemning them. It's Rivne on April 20th, 1919. Uh, and uh, information of the UNR government's effort to stop anti-Jewish pogroms. So also archival source, the Jewa archives font of uh, alias Cherry Cover. So, and uh, a letter from one of the acting state inspections to the of the Ukrainian People's Republic to the Minister of Jewish Affairs of the government of the UNR condemning the anti-Jewish pogrom and proposing to create a commission to study the exact of the damage, uh, the extent, uh, sorry, extent of the damage caused by the pogroms and uh, the possibilities of their financial uh, compensation. So, uh, and uh, this may be also a very interesting document translations uh, that give me a possibility to see it. During my movement, division was in the city, uh, so, so, so. Uh, of the, all of the cities, there were only two cases brought to the population, namely. In the city, one Cossack in the city uh, of the uh, assigned to my division wounded a Jewish boy. The Cossack was shot on my order without count uh, at the place of the crime. In the city of Balta, a uh, fire arose from the explosion of one of houses from which a third city minute was suffered, mostly quarters of the Jewish population. Not considering that a stubborn battle with the Bolsheviks went outside the city, I left the battlefield and arrived with part of the troops to localize the fire. 
uh, and in order to establish the reality of mentioned facts, please uh, appoint uh, a commission that would go to uh, go to place, uh, dismiss it from uh, the enemy, and check the about. End of quotation. And this copy of this order, report of Ottoman Tutunin, describing how he was able to stop anti-Jewish pogroms. So next, uh, second, it's also important document. Uh, a short, brief quotation. Uh, it's uh, despite the. Uh, circulars of leadership and state and military authorities of the UNR in some regions, anti-Jewish pogroms continued, just as they uh, spread in the Czech Republic, Poland, Romania, Hungary, and some other post-imperial countries. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, the responsibility uh, re responsible for these programs vary not only when our leadership, but also maybe situation. Uh, because, for example, representative of Federation of U Ukrainian Jews of England uh, said uh, uh, in interview, uh, write in his letter uh, the, uh, toward res uh, responsibility when our government for anti-Jewish pogroms. She she wrote that. However, I am not definitely sure that the current Ukrainian government can do any of the criticism because it occurs only one sixth part of the total territory of Ukraine, while the whole site was destroyed by all kinds of broken troops under the leadership of anti-Jewish leaders. We have to blame the general uh, clutter in Europe, end of quotation. Uh, so, uh, and maybe no less important is uh, to uh, quotation of other uh, friend of Ukrainians are not Margolin, who closely cooperated with, cooperated with UNR government. In 1919, he described the hard legacy and bad impact of anti-Semitism of Russian Empire in post-imperial Ukraine. You know that I have, uh, uh, no, in letter to Petlura, you know that I have no doubt uh, about the absolute democracy and competence absence of anti-Semitism of those who are at the head of our entire government apparatus. The old uh, uh, Russian, uh, but unfortunately, the same cannot be said about many, both in Ukraine and abroad. The old Russian school imposed uh, the seal of uh, uh, anti Semitism on the entire population of former Russian, but uh, this uh, poison was always planted even, uh, even more in the so-called pale of settle, settlement. Uh, only some time and stubborn work against this phenomenon can uh, heal the body of Ukraine from this disease." End of quotation. So, and uh, uh, I found many uh, examples, the cases of help for the Jews from the local Ukrainian population during pogroms of 1919. Uh, you can see it at the, this slide. So, and uh, next, next information. Uh, it's very maybe also important to say that uh, uh, Denikin refused to condemn anti Jewish pogroms, which were condemned by the UNR leadership. Uh, and this uh, quotation uh, during meeting with Denikin, Jewish delegates pleased him. If you say that this is not only not patriotic, but no doubt har harmful, uh, so, no, they said that uh, give the order to stop uh, pogroms. And Admir uh, because, for example, Admiral Kolchak issued a declaration, such a declaration. On, on this own, uh, Denikin answered it. Uh, uh, Denikin replied categorically, not now. It's, I think that it's very, uh, very uh, interesting uh, example. So, and uh, I think that uh, uh, historians, um, um, uh, I found uh, a larger number of uh, 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 testimonies of eyewitnesses of pogroms uh, and uh, murders that were permitted uh, uh, by the Ru Russian uh, uh, Russian army uh, uh, under command of uh, Anton Denikin, but I think that uh, anyone can find it in published monograph of Shechtman, Pogrome Dobrovolchevsky Army in uh, Ukraine. It was published in Russian. Uh, uh, so, so still uh, about 100 years ago. So, and uh, it's uh, maybe no less important is uh, uh, information which the UNN government gave to the 
uh, Jewish uh, uh, newspapers of that time uh, uh, informing about uh, Ukrainian Jewish relations. Let me uh, give some uh, quotation. Uh, for uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Andre, can I, can I just interrupt you for one quick moment? I, I'm wondering if you could speak a bit more slowly. I apologize for this. Uh, I'll try, but I, I'll I'll need my, maybe more time. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. T take your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the quotation from a letter of uh, written by J Julian Baczynski, the head of the Ukrainian mission to the United States, uh, entitled "Jewish Pogroms in Ukraine and the Ukrainian People's Republic." So. He said, I want you to realize uh, that for several generations past, we have had no quarrel with the Jewish people. For generation, no evidence can be traced out either on Ukrainian nor on uh, Jewish side of any antagonism between Ukrainian national uh, aspirations and the Jewish people, Jewish nationality and Jewish life in our country. There has been no reason for any antagonistic tendencies, uh, tendencies. Uh, and yet a sinister spirit of pogroms ruled throughout Ukraine. It was the spirit of Tsarist Russia. The administration, the bureaucracy and the police of the empire, school, church and yellow press were instrumental in setting the population of Ukraine against the Jews. It's a matter of common uh, knowledge that Jews uh, were persecuted and outraged and slain to avert the growing dissatisfaction of the uh, work, working men and the pauperized pauper, pauper peasant, and, so, and to justify further repression of, lib of liberal elements. Many a Ukrainian pauper and many a Ukrainian scamp received their murderous weapons and their uh, ignominious orders from the criminals much higher up Ukrainian democracy. Mutilated and stranded, uh, 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 so deprived uh, of any influence of what was happening in the Charles, uh, Charles rule as the unfortunate victims themselves. And uh, still uh, one quotation about the policy of Ukrainian People's Republic towards the Jews. After the breakdown uh, of the Russian Empire, the Ukrainian People's Republic has been established on the territory of Ukraine and the, at the very uh, inception of this republic, the first Ukrainian parliament, Central Rada, that abolished all Russian, uh, Russian uh, restrictions enforced by the Russian government and has proclaimed the principle of self-determination and uh, of full liberty of self-development for all Russian groups carrying out this principle in practice. Being uh, one uh, of the principal Russian minorities, the Jews in Ukraine have had granted by law a full autonomy and have had secured by the Ukrainian government all moral and material means uh, that are necessary for the development of their nationality and for the advancement, uh, uh, advancement of their national culture. Jewish uh, representatives have been invited and admitted to a real participation in government and to uh, leadership in uh, determining the destinies of the country. Our friendship was accepted without reservation, and I can say with a good deal of confidence that there was no Jewish faction in our country we did not admit, but that the Ukrainian People's Republic meant uh, the realization of the best hopes and rights of the Jewish people in Ukraine and of what so, and my, my, to my mind, no less important is a letter, a quotation from uh, a letter uh, from Israel Zangwill, noted uh, writer and president of the Jewish Territorial Organization, in reply to an invitation of the Ukrainian government to, to participate in the Commission for the Investigation of Jewish Anti Jewish Pogroms in Ukraine. So, just one quotation. Uh, 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 he, he wrote that uh, when a government is working hard, if not perhaps its hardest, to stop massacres for which the uh, unsettled stats uh, in, of Russia is largely responsible. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, confirmed uh, in uh, this confirmation from Israel Zangwele. And still one quotation from his letter. The national rights, you, uh, it's a letter to the uh, Baczynski, the head of the president of uh, the delegation of the Ukrainian Republic. So he wrote, the national rights you have uh, uh, given to the Jews are uh, a manifestation of true uh, statesmanship and in, uh, sh uh, in uh, shining contrast with the Jewish 
policy of Poland. And I can only hope that you Republic will be preserved to give the rest of the world an example of the strength uh, and the ex exalted patriotism that comes from the cordial cooperation and mutual respect of all the varied racial and re uh, religious uh, elements uh, that make up a modern state." End of uh, quotation. So, and conclusion to the Ukrainian Jewish relations in time of uh, Ukrainian National Revolution. To the end of 1970, Ukraine was not responsible for any uh, Jewish excesses, which were organized by retreating and demoralized soldiers of former imperial uh, army. Of course, later they were supported by part of uh, uh, of local uh, peasants and uh, population of the cities. Since May of mid uh, December 1918, during so called Hetmanat, there was no any essential pogroms in Ukraine. It's, I think that it's also a very important fact. From the uh, February of 1919, Ukraine was uh, not a separate state with, uh, with controlled territory under the local government. By, but a battlefield where the different actors played their political roles and crossed the interests and activities of different forces. Ukraine, as former part of our colony of Russia, became a region where a lot of combat of the Russian intervention took place. It's possible to talk about uh, uh, pogroms or small detachments of one air army only with a significant significant restriction. These pogroms in the first place often had a social character and were comparatively very few in number in three reg regions of Ukraine, mainly Kyiv, Bolenia and Podilia gubernias. On the other hand, unlike all uh, other pogroms, these uh, Ukrainian pogroms were carried out without any approval or even convenience of the UNR authorities. The latter resolutely fought and uh, severely punished uh, the program excesses of individual, individual unbreeded UNR army units. Nevertheless, pogroms took place. Uh, often they were very cruel, like other pogroms carried out by Russian uh, volunteer army of uh, Anton Denikin and armed detachments of Bolshevik Russia in Ukraine, the Polish troops in uh, Poland and Ukraine, Romanian army in, in Romania, and even in Czechoslovak Republic. So, and uh, uh, now the uh, interwar period. Ukrainian Jewish relations in the time of Western Ukrainian Republic may be last uh, uh, example of uh, time of the Ukrainian National Revolution. I think that it's very important to say that to the end of the First World War, the other Ukrainian lands, Galicia and Bukovina, were, uh, were the part of Austro Hungary. -Hungary which pursued an inclusive nationality policy, fighting against inherent anti-Semitism and working to integrate it. Just, but uh, of course, the causes of uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, occurred too. But uh, it's very important fact that first uh, anti-Jewish pogrom in uh, uh, Galicia was organized by the uh, Russian occupation army in September of 90, uh, 1950. Uh, so, on November 1, 1918, the Western Ukrainian People's Republic was pro proclaimed that, like the UNR government, proclaimed its support of Jewish national uh, autonomy. The book of Jewish uh, on Jewish national autonomy in Zunr, Zachidno uh, Ukrainska Narodna Respublika, written by Ruben Fan, a Jewish uh, entrepreneur, historian, and pol political leader, is devoted to the situation of Jewish minority in eastern Galicia during the rule of the Zunr. Based on the documentary evidence and on his his own experience and observation, Fan described the efforts of the political and community leaders of the Galician Jewish minority to establish Jewish national autonomy under Ukrainian rule in this region. Uh, as a punishment for support of Ukrainians, Polish troops organized anti-Jewish pogroms in Lviv and uh, Volodymyr Volensky. Just one quotation from article of Jewish author in, in Ukrainian language newspaper in the, this time that was issued in Kyiv. For their considerable support to the Ukrainian Galician Jews paid not only with the great blood on their blues as uh, in the ranks of the Ukrainian army, but also with uh, countless victims of their civilian population like Lviv and Volodymyr Volensky Fair. 
uh, highly sacred blood uh, to serve as a pledge of happiness for both peoples uh, in their uh, peaceful goodness and free cultural creativity." End of quotation. And uh, the fact of Ukrainian Jewish solidarity in Galicia was mentioned also in some uh, UNR editions. It was stated in one of them. In Galicia, the Jews marched together with the Ukrainians. The Poles of the Jews uh, uh, and the Ukrainians are equally scrutinizing and the Galician Ukrainian community should value the same collective work. Uh, likewise, our Cossacks turned their respect for their loyalty. So, and uh, maybe uh, it's necessary to say about uh, 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 most prominent uh, activists uh, of the uh, who, of Ukrainian Jewish uh, uh, cooperation uh, in interwar period. Uh, first of all, uh, I I must uh, mention it. It, may, it should be mentioned the key figures and main aspects of Ukrainian Jewish relations in Western Ukraine. So, uh, most in, most known uh, uh, may be uh, activist of uh, Jewish society in Galicia was Itzhak Grunbaum. He was a very uh, prominent Jewish and Zionist activist in the Second Polish Republic and uh, uh, member of the legislative same and the same of the or diet uh, of uh, Polish Parliament of the first, uh, second, and third term of the Second Polish Republic. He he, he was was the moving force in forming a collaboration with other minority parties uh, represented in the same, including Germans, Ukrainians, and others, to form a bloc of national minorities alliance in 1922 that acted to present the rights of minority population in Poland. In 1922, he commonly with. Ukrainian politician Dmitro Levitsky was one of the initiators of the establishment of the Black of National Minorities, which was successful in the first national wide elections. It was 35 seats for the Jewish minority in the Polish diet. The second, maybe most prominent uh, deputy to the uh, Jewish deputy in Polish Diet was uh, Emil Zomerstein. Uh, according to Milena Rudnitska, Ukrainian deputy to the Polish uh, parliament, uh, uh, Emil Zomerstein was just old colleague from the Warsaw Diet. She, she wrote, I remember him as a man uh, in uh, his prime, full of energy and temperament, a, a cultured person with great sociability. Uh, he was a brave, uh, brave uh, fighter for the rights of the Jewish people, one of the leaders of the Zionist movement in Galicia. I remember him uh, how from the platform of the Diet with uh, indignation uh, he brandished uh, a devastating for Jewish uh, policy uh, of the Polish government and anti-Semitism of Polish citizens. I see how he are argued with uh, the uh, ambassadors from the government uh, majority at the Diet committees, uh, or how uh, the, he uh, wholly deba deba debated in the Diet uh, side in this. Dr. Emil Zomerstein loved political work and immersed himself in it. Meetings, meetings, trips to the field, active work in political, cultural, cultural and economic organization. In addition, the professional work uh, of a lawyer and uh, duties in the Chamber of Advocates, of which he was the vice president. Dr. Emil Zomerstein uh, uh, will remain in the good memory of Ukrainians as a loyal, early and outstanding politician and a Jewish patriot devoted to the cause of his people." End of quotation. So, and maybe very important is, uh, must be mentioned also Ukrainian deputy of uh, Polish parliament, uh, Stepan Baran. In 1936, he turned out with uh, strong criticism of uh, anti-Semitism. He wrote that the uh, anti-Semitism was constantly aligned to the Ukrainian intelligentsia. He wrote that we are currently conducting an awareness uh, uh, rising campaign among the Ukrainian masses to prevent them from becoming a tool of Polish anti-Semitism. And in this spirit and direction, we have published several appeals and appeals to the Ukrainian nation. 
I am pleased to say that the Polish National Democracy action against the Jews, despite efforts and efforts in this direction, has had no effect on the Ukrainian population. End of quotation. And very important that this call was uh, uh, was uh, very important for further cooperation. For example, uh, Jewish deputy to, to the uh, Polish parliament, Henrik Rosman, wrote in uh, uh, one article uh, about uh, Ukrainian proposals in uh, Lviv uh, every day, uh, daily newspaper, uh, Hvila. We are pleased with the expression of goodwill towards the improvement of uh, Jewish-Ukrainian relations. Our policy uh, uh, has never been directed against the Ukrainians. If the last journalistic appearance of the influential and talented Ukrainian leader, Dr. Baran, is to be the beginning of a new turn in the attitude of Ukrainians towards us Jews, then we can only welcome, well, welcome it with greater satisfaction. If the hand of peace and understanding is extended to us, it can always be expected to be embraced by us. It has always been our greatest desire to live in harmony and harmonious understanding with the nations, provided that we are given the possibility to free political, economical, and national life. End of quotation. And uh, it must be mentioned that po Polish right radical parties tried uh, to give influence on the Ukrainian population. For example, here is uh, uh, the example of uh, anti-Jewish uh, uh, leaflets and appeals that were spread uh, by the right-wing political party, Polish right-wing political parties of the Second Polish Republic quite legally. So, but uh, despite of this, uh, Ukrainian society and students don't support the discrimination of Jews, for example, by the Polish uh, anti-Semites in Polish universities. Uh, for example, Roman Havreliak, student of Lviv Polytechnical Institute uh, from 1935 to 1938, uh, so described the discrimination of Jews by the Polish chauvinists. Almost all uh, Polish students were influenced by uh, and belong, belong it to the Polish Chauvinist Party People's Front, which promoted radical policies uh, against minorities and extreme uh, anti-Semitism. We Ukrainian students did not get involved in the uh, an, uh, uh, the action of the Andesios and keep uh, ourselves uh, aloof, uh, and the index did not touch us then. End of Quotation. So it's also important to say that Ukrainian demonstrate Ukrainian demonstrated solidarity with Ukrainians uh, in in protest against discrimination of Jews. Uh, so, example, is this uh, 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 article in uh, uh, in Hvila about that Ukrainians criticized the practice of uh, uh, bench uh, ghetto for Jews in Polish universities. So, and, uh, but anyway, uh, maybe the Ukrainian uh, uh, Jewish relations de developed with some problems. Because, for example, Milena Rudnitska, uh, a very uh, important person of uh, uh, Ukrainian political life in interwar Poland, uh, she was uh, the uh, uh, daughter of uh, Ukrainian Ivan Rudnitsky and Jew Jewish uh, Ida Pigel. She wrote in his uh, uh, brief memoirs. On the territory of Warsaw Diet, Ukrainians and Jewish parliamentarians uh, walked hand in hand in solidarity because the national policy of Poland and the similar political situation of our peoples forced us to do so. The electoral campaign for the Diet and the uh, Senate encouraged Jews and Ukrainians to form electoral blocks in order to win parliamentary mandates. But in the region, uh, uh, both societies, Ukrainian and Jewish, lived in a, a separate life in that interwar period in the, under Poland, fenced off by a wall of mutual uh, resentment. Uh, also, it is not surprising in, even political fig figures uh, who cooperated with each other in Warsaw did not support political trade relations in Lviv. Uh, they didn't uh, even try to sit down uh, at a common table to find out and resolve mutual uh, regrets and uh, grievances. So maybe some ethnic stereotypes were strong at that time. So. 
And uh, it must be maintained also controversies towards the Jews and anti-Semitism in visions of uh, right radical Ukrainian nationalists. Uh, Hitler's rise to power and his successes in international politics highlighted anti-Semitism among radical Ukrainian nationalists. Anti-Semitic articles regularly appeared in the own controlled weekly for peasants' novice law, especially between 1937 and 1988. Discussion on the Jewish question appeared in the official organ of UN, Rusbudova Nazi. In 1930, a leading UN theoretical uh, 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 could still suggest working together with Jews to create a viable Ukrainian state. Formulating the task of the Ukrainian government in the restored state, for example, Mikola Siborsky in 1930 in the article Ukrainian Nationalism and Jewry, in Jewry especially stated, it will be the duty of the state government to create such conditions for Jewry under which, while preserving its organic, racial, cultural, and religious authorities, at the same time would be involved in an equal factor of the cycle of general uh, social and state interest and pos uh, positive creativity. Considering the author's position in the structure of the world, political and later organizational referent of the conduct of the uh, leadership of Ukrainian nationalists, one of his uh, main ideolo ideologues uh, and the appearance of this article in the official own uh, building the nation, the declared statement can be considered the official position of the organization at that time. This position reminded uh, essentially on chain in the the following uh, near year, dis despite the uh, uh, rampant anti-Semitism in interwar Poland, Nazi Germany, and uh, even the post uh, post uh, First World War uh, uh, Bolshevik Russia or uh, the USSR. Uh, but despite of some anti-Jewish tendencies of some representatives of own leadership, they would not uh, initiated openly anti. Jewish pogroms. It's still one important quotation. It was stated in the report of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Poland in the own, uh, on the own activity in 1933. In, in uh, 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 the first anti-Jewish uh, pogrom uh, incident uh, was recorded in the Sokal County in April. This action was not yet directed directly uh, against Jews, but only against Jewish-owned uh, tobacco nest shops. Uh, the boycott of the Jewish population started by members of the UN did not seem to have the approval of the foreign profit or leadership because its leader, Johan Konovalis, expressed dissatisfaction with alienating Jews from uh, Ukrainians. Uh, uh, so, uh, I think that it's very uh, important, uh, interesting citation, and uh, it, ma, ma, uh, it also um, can be mentioned the condemnation of uh, anti-Semitism by the own leaders uh, at that time that were arrested uh, and uh, declared it during the, their interrogation by Polish pol policemen. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, it can agree with uh, Tara, uh, with uh, 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 scholar Stras Kurilo and John pa Paul Himka that apparently there was no consensus on the Jewish question in the organization of the Ukrainian nationalists of that time. Uh, so, and uh, I uh, think that also must be mentioned the murder of Simon Petlura and its negative impact on the Ukrainian Jewish relation. Relations between Ukrainians and Jews uh, deteriorated after after 1926 uh, when Sholem Schwarzbart uh, uh, assassinated Petlura on the streets of Paris. Uh, after a much published uh, uh, controversial trial, Schwarzbart was uh, acquired, and uh, but uh, this process uh, evoked very uh, hard uh, relationship between many Ukrainian uh, and uh, Jewish uh, politi politicians and uh, civil leaders. When the uh, when uh, Petlura was murdered, uh, it's uh, interesting to note that uh, after accusing him in organization of programs, Vladimir Zabotinsky, one of the Zionist movement leaders, uh, declared. Neither Petlura, not with Nechenko, not other prominent members of the Ukrainian government have ever been and are not uh, those who are called uh, reauthors. Uh, also, I do not know them personally. I don't know this type uh, of intellectual labor who, pro, pro, uh, who uh, pro, uh, pro, professes socialist ideas. 
So, and maybe it also, I, I want to give a quotation of a letter of uh, of, uh, former Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of uh, UNR, Alexander Shulhin, who in 1926, uh, on uh, August 20th, wrote to Arnold Margolin. Uh, then there was enough danger in the sense of anti-Semitic propaganda already in the mere fact that a Jews, Jew, uh, Jew killed Petlura the total hero and idol of some part for the Ukrainians. Uh, this fact has already managed uh, to strip up uh, uh, an outbreak of anti-Semitism in some Ukrainian circles. However, from the first moment we turned out our attention not to the Jews, but to the Bolsheviks. We told the Ukrainian emigrants, as I did to the Ukrainian population of Ukraine itself, that the uh, uh, Culprits uh, uh, must be found in Moscow. That Schwarzbart was only a web weapon in their hands. All declaration of all Ukrainian parties were written at this spirit. Th thousands uh, of such declarations are now being uh, spread throughout Ukraine. You see that Ukrainian intelligentsia has do done everything possible to stop the anti-Semitic propaganda in connection with the murder. I think that that is very uh, important quotation, and still one quotation maybe uh, of Volodymyr Venechenko, head of the ONR directory at, in time of the first pogroms. In uh, on the, this point, uh, Vladimir Venechenko stated in his declaration uh, to for French court uh, during Schwarzburg process in 1920. Seven on the reasons of spreading the, the myth of, of the uh, global mass participation of all of Ukrainians in anti-Jewish pogroms in all the regions of Ukraine. The enemies of uh, and the independent existence of Ukraine gives the performer of this shameful events the whole Ukrainian people. Their goal, goals, uh, clear. Uh, goal is clear. clear. Uh, it is uh, it is too convenient the public opinion of the whole world that the Ukrainian people are nothing but a barbaric people, a bandit, and not words, not that uh, 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 an independent Ukraine free state, but also elementary respect. Uh, only sneaky uh, uh, lion, and uh, the, therefore is not required to help uh, the Ukrainian people in his struggle. But instead, it is necessary to resist his claims by all means. The Jewish people, they say, have the right to make all possible reservations about this uh, desire to liberate the Ukrainian people. End of quotation. So, and uh, I think that necessary also to be, must be maintained the influence of, of from Russia and post or post imperial Soviet Russian uh, eudophobia. The, uh, I, I mean the politics of Bolshevik Russia as a state with, with latent uh, anti-Semitism. Uh, the emancipation of, of Jews within the Bolshevik Russia evokes it to popular resentment, discrimination, and occasional bursts and, uh, of anti-Semitic violence throughout the 1920s and 1930s. However, the Bolsheviks very often unwilling to punish or even publicly acknowledge this uh, anti-Semitism because of the complicated politics. We spread uh, widespread uh, popular uh, uh, conflation of Jews with Bolshevism, the Soviet uh, ongoing effort to establish legitimacy and control our multi-ethnic realm, and their claim that they were creating a revolutionary egalitarian so society, all this made it politically undesirable for the uh, authorities of the Soviet Union to fully condemn uh, anti-Semitism. It, and I think that's still one very, very interesting quotation of Volodymyr Venechenko. I, I, I witnesses uh, who haven't met with, with Lenin and uh, on the responsibility of Bolshevik Russia for provo provoking anti Semitism in Ukraine. So, but has anti Semitism disappeared in Ukraine under the government that calls uh, itself Soviet and Socialist? Unfortunately, it 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 not true. Uh, not only did not uh, disappear, but also increased. When er earlier anti-Jewish sentiments were the shameful privileges of the landlords and gulags, now they are already capturing a part of the peasantry and workers. Never before have Russia and Ukraine been in such a, a dire situation, and never has the scourge of anti-Semitism been so widespread in those countries as it is uh, shown. So, 
and uh, the, uh, towards the uh, rise of anti-Semitism in the Soviet Union, uh, it uh, so maybe can, can be mentioned that in November of 1926, the Soviet authorities acknowledged that Russian workers were more anti-Semitic today than under Tsarism. An official survey of anti-Semitism among trade union members conducted in February 1929 in Moscow found that anti-Semitic feelings among workers is spreading uh, chiefly in the backward sections of the working class that have close lies with the peasantry. At the heart of the prejudice, uh, as it had been in the 1880s uh, uh, and uh, afterwards, was talk of uh, uh, Jewish domination. So, and uh, maybe uh, uh, the defeat uh, in the second half of 1927 of the party opposition led uh, by Lev Trotsky, uh, Bronstein, among which were the very many Jews, was per per perceived by many members of the party, as well as by non-party mass, as the del deliverance from a larger representation of Jews in the leadership of the party and the country. There was a powerful growth of anti-Semitic attitudes in factories, in institutions, and education institutions. The, the opinion uh, 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 that the party weakly fights anti-Semitism uh, and such anti-Semitic assessment of the Jews in the USSR uh, uh, were very widespread. For example, uh, such stereotypes that they lived and live well, uh, do, they do, don't want to do hard work, they don't uh, engage in bread baking, uh, also now they are allowed. At work and in the service, they pull each other up to the service ladder, they award uh, military service and change in case of war and so on. Uh, many of such stereotypes were fixed in the messages of the Soviet security uh, uh, services uh, reports. So, Vasily Shulgin, a Russian great power chauvinist, stated in 1930, uh, well, uh, in 1930 uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, his public, publicist, uh, publicistic uh, in Russia, one of the strong periodically rising waves of anti-Semitophobia is currently working in the open. In recent years, anti-Semites in Soviet Russia have been growing like mushrooms. So, and uh, maybe uh, no less important is uh, confirmation of Volodymyr Venechenko, who give his own explanation for reasons of the rise of anti-Semitism in the USSR. He said that uh, the formula, the worse and the better, cannot serve to weaken anti-Semitism in the masses. On the contrary, all means must be used to elevate and consolidate the economic condition on the country and the working masses. So he was sure that main reasons uh, of, of anti-Semitism was of economical character. Uh, Benichenko uh, was sure that uh, Jews should be adherents of democratic Ukrainian culture, and not the auto authoritarian Russian one. Benichenko meant that, uh, proposed such thesis on the perspectives of Ukrainian Jewish relations on Ukrainian lands within the Soviet Union. So uh, it is in the uh, interest of Ukrainians to have in Jewry not an enemy, but on the contrary, a friend and collaborator. No, but not by hostility, not, not by revenge, not by pogroms, not by expelling Jewry, not by restricting its rights uh, at the uh, convinced anti-Semitist dream. Can the harm that some elements of Jewry bring to Ukrainian national liberation, ful fulfilling the centralizing and ratifying directives of Moscow be directed by, by involving Jewry in the interest of Ukraine as a state and a national personal body, by acceptance uh, as an equal member in a joint economic, political, and cultural collective. Jewry, for its part, must once and for all uh, be uh, 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 Eliminated uh, must be must forget maybe the idea that the revival of the Ukrainian nation cannot be stopped by any for forces that the former United and uh, Russia will not exist forever that the struggle of the Ukrainian nation against Russian imperialism will not stop until until Ukraine becomes a completely free independent and uh, uh, state uh, so. 
and uh, main conclusions to my presentation. So first, uh, under the circumstances of recent nationalism in Eastern Europe, uh, after World War I, the new states, uh, for example, Pol Poland, Hungary, Romania, tried to construct ethnocentric states uh, and to exclude uh, Jews from certain social positions and professions, with uh, Jews seen as, as a threat to state security. Uh, as a result, in rural Poland, Hungary, and Romania, in which some Ukrainian lands were integrated, discrimination and anti Semitic policies uh, uh, were widely practiced. And uh, uh, these political forces used anti Semitism as a way to prevent the unification of national minorities in their struggle for their civic, national, and social rights. Second, uh, Ukrainians and Poles uh, of Galicia organizing uh, economic societies and cooperatives uh, noticeably squeezed Jews in the sphere of credit and trade. Conflicts were uh, extinguished, in particular, were a propaganda uh, campaign in the press, uh, both Ukrainian and Polish. I mean the territory of Western Ukraine, of course. Uh, that pogroms cannot be uh, a method of economic struggle. The rise of anti-Semitism in Western Ukraine in the interwar period was in many aspects the initiator of anti-Semitic ideas from other uh, Eastern European lands. The Ukrainian National uh, People's Republic was there was the most positive development in the history of Ukrainian Jewish relations. Third, in the period of the rise of right-wing ideologies, anti-Judaism was among uh, the main ideological elements that generated great power chauvinism. Anti-Semitism was artificially popular, popularized uh, as a means uh, to turn away the uh, attention of the people from uh, receiving the actual social economic problems and to accumulate negativism in mass consciousness by looking for an internal enemy. So, and uh, fourth, there were also specific social routes to anti-Semitism in Ukraine. The Ukrainian national movement in Galicia also like the Polish national movement, there opposed Jews and uh, tavern keepers and money landlenders uh, positing a dichotomy be between the reading room, uh, so-called so Chetalnia, and the inn, Korchma. The uh, uh, part of activists of national movement spread anti-Jewish sentiment in the villages. So maybe it was uh, some sad tradition. And fifth, uh, some uh, representatives of Ukrainian right-wing uh, uh, circles, as well as, uh, as well as Polish and other nationalists, used the anti-Jewish rhetoric and their press publication and organized anti-Jewish practices, especially in the years before World War uh, II. In uh, uh, Ukrainian Jewish relations in Western Ukraine in the interwar period, there were various uh, typical orientations, practices, and tendencies. While part of Ukrainian society succumbed to the influence of anti Jewish rhetoric, other parts of Ukrainian society, in coordination with representatives of the Jewish community, tried to fight for their rights in the Polish uh, Republic. Uh, sevens, uh, because the Ukrainians never had a national state that was recognized by any state after 1920s uh, and up to the 1991, contrary to Poland, Romania, and Hungary, Ukraine never initiated a larger scale anti Semitic campaign on the state level. Many anti Semitic slogans of Ukrainian nationalist uh, ideologists were basically borrowed from the outside. In many points, anti-Semitism in Ukraine was to some degree a kind of anti-intellectual plagiarism plagiarism from other European examples typical of that time. Uh, As a result, the individuals who were directly or indirectly involved with, in anti-Semitic activities in Western Ukraine were not exclusively Ukrainians, but also Poles, Russians, Hungarians, Romanians, and peoples of other nationalities. I mean, national minorities. Ninth, uh, anti Semitism in the interwar Eastern Europe was a central and crucial factor in the formation of a negative image of Jews that aided the Nazi policy of uh, spreading a negative image of Jews and uh, an indirect way prepared the ideological ground for the Nazi final solution of the so-called final solution of the Jewish question. And maybe still overall take away. 
the most important aspect in the development of inter-ethnic uh, relations between Ukrainians and Jews was the dialogue of political elites as uh, an advantageous uh, foundation for the development of inter-ethnic relations. However, the Russian as well as Polish and other European chauvinists were the best teachers of the worst animosity, hatred, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism. In comparison to them, many Ukrainian anti-Semites were as the small students of the foreign professors of Evil. Using a combination of figurative thinking and the terms of political science, we can conclude that the main problem in the vital small uh, theater uh, of Ukrainian Jewish actors uh, has always been that on the big stage of uh, politics, the main rulers uh, of the game were not determined by the ethnic act actors themselves. And uh, almost always external directors and the main players of performers of the main roles. And the consequence of this, Ukrainians and Jews did not define and choose roles of, for themselves, but were only forced to play the roles prepared for them by foreign directors in their geopolitical grand theater, who planned to be the most important players themselves and allocate for ethnic actors only secondary roles or roles of background actors or episodic roles. And for the rest of the world, the role of ordinary spectators deprived of rights and opportunities to change the course of political place. The consequence of this was open that uh, ethnopolitical players were forced, figuratively speaking, instead of optimist, uh, optimistic plays to perform roles of dramas and tragedies. The uh, rep repertoire uh, to ear, uh, and ending of which were pre-written by geopolitical directors. As a consequence of this, uh, plans for a breakthrough uh, successful career of ethnic act actors often ended in fiasco and failure. failure. Uh, the maximum that the directors allowed the actors uh, was to prepare scripts to agree with them. Uh, those who are interested in my scholarly work may email me uh, to request uh, the text, may be for giving me advices and rem remarks later. I am preparing a monograph. I am also I am also preparing a monograph that uh, uh, con uh, con com combines my finding, which will be available in the near future. Still, one uh, thank you for giving me so uh, beautiful opportunities uh, to be a fellow in uh, uh, Yivo Institute for Jewish Research, and thank you for your interest in my research. Thank you, uh, Professor Bolyanovsky. Um, you can uh, stop sharing your screen if you like. Um, oh, okay, 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 okay. Just a moment. Fine. Thank you. Um, so this was truly an an enormous amount of information. There's a lot to think about here. Um, I, I just want to point out to the audience that uh, Professor Bolyanovsky, because of the war in Ukraine, uh, is not permitted to leave Ukraine and had to do his research at YIVO. Uh, from Ukraine, and he worked together with our archivists uh, in order to get the uh, archival material for for his uh, research on his fellowship. So this was an unusual situation, but we're we're pleased that it uh, it worked out, and the, that you were able to to uh, obtain such a large amount of archival information uh, completely online. Uh, and that's you know that is somewhat exceptional in in the history of. The Evo Fellowship Program. Uh, so, so thank you for uh, thank you to our archivists for accommodating uh, this situation. Uh, I we I, we have a little, tiny bit of time to get to questions. Um, I just want to uh, quickly uh, uh, ask if you're familiar with uh, Professor Jeffrey Weidlinger's book in the Heart of Civilized Europe, which also deals with this uh, with the topic of um, of pogroms in uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and which he considers to be sort of ethnic riots in which Jews uh, were were attacked and murdered. Um, and I'm just wondering if 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 you have an opinion of this uh, on this book uh, and how it plays into your own research. Did you did you hear that? 
No, no, some some problem. I, I don't understand. Once again, please. Uh, okay, no, I, my 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 question was uh, was if you've uh, if you've read uh, Professor Jeffrey Weidlinger's new book in the heart of civilized Europe, because this book deals with the pogroms of 1918 to 1921, and uh, this is a central uh, central topic in your own research, and I'm wondering how this book helps or 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 uh so so thank you uh, I, I i got this book uh, it's very interesting but i think that no less important for me was uh, uh, the book of uh, uh, alia cherikover uh, i mean the about the pogroms of in ukraine in 1919 in yiddish i i used the uh, some some possibility to translate it it was very uh, i think i found it very interesting and i will use first of all the book of cherico and then a book that you said uh, too okay right. thank you okay um all right so to, uh, questions from the audience uh, a number of people have asked uh what the influence and role of the church was during uh, uh during this period on anti-semitism and the role that they that they played i think that uh, the um, i th think that's very interesting questions and i think that uh, the historians historians might, must study these questions uh, still f since uh, the um, uh, pogroms of 1881 uh, of the 19th century because uh, because uh, i think that uh, we uh, we don't know the exact information about the influence of uh, russian orthodox church on the formation of this uh, image uh, because uh, for example what uh, 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 i i know exactly for example that ukrainian uh, greek catholic church supported uh, uh, the uh, jewish uh, movement and for example the metropolitan of ukraine Ukrainian uh, Greek Catholic Church, uh, Metropolitan Andrei uh, Sheptetsky, uh, she in an uh, interview to uh, Krumholz, journalist uh, in Krakow in 1934, uh, he openly declared that he supported uh, Zionism as progressive movement. And uh, she, uh, it's uh, and at the same time, uh, she, she blessed the Jews and uh, wished uh, to obtain their uh, aim uh, to to build their own national uh, state it was very interesting interview and uh, but uh, unfortunately i, I had, my time was limited and I, it was uh, impossible to give all the information on this topic and i think that uh, we must uh, and second very interesting uh, figure of the ukrainian national life was Ivan Buchko, uh, bishop, that uh, declared uh, pro, uh, also in interview to a Jewish uh, journalist, he said uh, in 1936, year, in uh, this year, that uh, she uh, condemned anti-Semitism and uh, also said very uh, go good words on the address of the Jews and on the uh, need uh, of Ukrainian Jewish uh, cooperation, I think. But uh, uh, to my mind, uh, for to was uh, uh, if we, we say about the uh, uh, the situation of pogroms of 1990, uh, we must say that uh, the influence of re re religious uh, communities was very small to my mind because it was time of war of uh, everybody against everybody because it was chaos and uh, there was some nihilistic time and uh, and uh, don't don't uh, don't forget that at that time it was very strong in Ukraine uh, after the uh, its occupation of the, by the troops of the. Bolshevik Russia, it was very strong and, uh, and atheistic uh, propaganda. It, it means that uh, the, uh, there is no God, uh, and uh, but it's, it has uh, just, uh, just uh, other effect. Because uh, when there is no God, it means that uh, the people uh, uh, can do what uh, uh, anything. The, the, the people can uh, kill, the people can m murder, and uh, the, there will be nothing, nothing uh, them uh, from the uh, 
uh, heaven, uh, nothing, and uh, it's maybe some uh, may, uh, to my mind, it, it, it this uh, this processes of some nihilism began after the October uh, uh, October so called October Revolution of Bolsheviks in Russia. I think that we, we must uh, look for for that time. But to my mind, uh, it also uh, very very uh, strong influences of Russian Orthodox Church because we can see. Uh, even now, uh, how how strong there's an influence in the contemporary wars of, of Russia against uh, Ukraine. Right, um, and you know one of the things that you've done here is you've you've provided a, a many many quotes and citations from political leaders, and uh, you just did so with with church leaders, um, in which there is a Ukrainian Jewish unity. Uh, where the, the Jews, where the Jews and the Ukrainians are are, are working together to support an independent Ukraine, um, but nonetheless, and a person mentions this here that during the pogroms of 19, uh, 1919 to nineteen twenty one, a hundred thousand Jews were murdered. Uh, so there's clearly uh, some sort of disconnect between the 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 pronouncements of of leaders uh, and the reality on the ground. With, yes. with what's happening. Uh, so, you know, to what do you, I mean, to what do you attribute this? Because- uh -huh, the, yes. You go. yes, 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 I understand, thank you. Thank you, uh, for, it's very important questions. Uh, what is the problem? Uh, the problem is that uh, to my mind, I, I said uh, to you, uh, yeah earlier uh, that uh, for on on the basis of this mark, uh, material that i collected i can uh, i can write uh, not uh, one but for example two or even the three monographs and so uh, what uh, uh, and i decided uh, to give in my uh, in my presentation this information because it was very it was very, very um, it was new for me we, I found it that it was never published because there is some literature on pogroms uh, and uh, very known uh, books, for example, the same a cherry cover and uh, ending with uh, monographs that you have mentioned on it uh, uh, right now. And uh, I think that uh, this question will be uh, uh, depicted in my future monograph. But because, uh, uh, because believe me that uh, uh, I collected uh, many hundred uh, files, many hundred pages, and I will study it. And believe me, I will describe it and use it. But, but I think that it's important for such a short time to give and to, to focus on the all of these aspects. I, I think that it will be, and I think it's very tragical and it's uh, it's very actual problem because uh, to my mind, uh, despite the, some some collection of documents were published uh, in Russia, in Ukraine, but, but I, still, I think that uh, um, it must be depicted and, and I, I will devote to these questions uh, uh, the necessary attention in my in my monograph. Um, okay, I, I, we have time for one more question and uh, someone asks, well, what kind of accountability, uh, for example, arrests and trial convictions were there for the, the hundreds of pogroms that took place in Euro Ukraine during this, uh, this period? Do you mean arrests? Arrests or trials, convictions. Uh, arrest of, of of which category of people uh, of person? I would say people who po people who perpetrated pogroms. Aha, uh -huh. pogroms. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I think if I I will write uh, the monograph, I will uh, devote it a special chapter to this question. Why? Because uh, uh, the, the it will. Uh, uh, it's well very known fact I found, uh, for, for example, in Ukrainian archives, uh, information and, and uh, even not inf just information that in Ukrainian uh, the, um, the central state archive of the highest authorities in Ukraine, there are uh, a few collections uh, of uh, uh, UNR of uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian People Republic and the uh, collections. One of them is about uh, creation of. 
judgment uh, over the persons who were uh, uh, accused in pogrom activity uh, or pogromist activity. And uh, I, I saw uh, um, uh, only separate of them and I can say, say definitely that uh, there were uh, uh, many initi initiatives uh, to stop the programs. But what there was problem? Problem was that to my mind, it might be subjective and maybe it's just my first uh, uh, imagination that the problem was that it was time of uh, Russian-Ukrainian war and uh, the, fro the front line uh, uh, every time was moved and uh, transfer it. And it was just not possibility to control the territory where the pogroms took place. And uh, uh, I found uh, a document, uh, uh, but I have no time uh, to put it to my presentation because of limitation. I, for example, uh, I remember that uh, uh, some uh, Ottomans uh, uh, issued orders where the uh, uh, organizers of pogroms were mentioned, and uh, it was uh, stated that they were punished. And uh, what about arrest? I think that uh, they were um, some very short uh, uh, after uh, uh, the. Uh, the uh, uh, it is uh, maybe still uh, I maybe you remember I put in one slide uh, some important documents uh, of state inspectorate of the Ukrainian uh, People's uh, Republic uh, about uh, uh, investigation of uh, one fact of uh, pogroms. Uh, the, it must be said that this uh, state inspection was created specially uh, to stop uh, the pogroms or violence or maybe some uh, some bad. Uh, uh, occur some bad uh, events in the Ukrainian army. But uh, I still think that uh, uh, maybe this question was uh, was studied by Henry Abramson. Uh, if by, uh, it's true or, or not, or still not. I think it's, I think it's, I mean, I don't have his material. What? I, I, I we would have to consult Henry Abramson. Well, some problem with connection. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I think it, it, we would have to consult Henry Abramson's work in order to find out. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 anyway, I will, I will research this question because uh, I found, I, I, uh, I found uh, some, uh, some examples uh, already that uh, some, uh, some members were punished. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not devoted a special attention and a larger attention to this question. But thank you. I, I, I will mark it, that uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's important. OK. All right. In the meantime, we're, we're out of time. Um, you know, we'll have to this is an enormous amount of material. It's a difficult topic. You know, I think we'll have to wait until your monograph is complete in order to see if this reassessment actually works. Um, uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for this uh, for this fascinating talk. Uh, again, this is um, I've been uh, Dr. Andre Bolyanovsky's uh, YIVO Fellowship Lecture. It was sponsored by the Professor Bernard Chosi uh, Memorial Fellowship and the Natalie and Mendel Rakolin Memorial Fellowship. Uh, we have uh, a few more uh, fellowship lectures coming up uh, this week and next week. So please uh, stay tuned for that if you found it interesting. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone in the audience for your support. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor Bolyanovsky. And thank you for you once again for so uh, beautiful possibility to found so, so fantastic, just fantastic documents and uh, that give me opportunity to, to write my monograph. Thank you once again. And I, I think that we will stay in contact by, by email. Yes, certainly. Be well. Thank you.